Is it on now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got to say, I was born in 1944. I got born again in 1954. Amen. I've been preaching for 45 years. Yes, sir. I'm a well-educated man. I don't, most of you don't show too often and things of this nature. Uh, but uh, anyway, take your Bibles. Enough said. Wife says, don't tell them about your history, Tom. Take Psalm 35. <laughs> 35. We got to go eat some lunch here, and I'll try to get you out here at least by 10 till. No, that's right in that. Okay. Psalms 35, reading verses 1 through 9 and 17 through 20. You know what I like about the preaching this morning? I loved every bit of it. Amen. And uh, they yep. have a lot of scriptures in there. And uh, I read someplace, I believe it was Charles Hadley Spurgeon. He said, uh, if you want to have a good message, just fill it with God's word. Yep. <laughs> you can't go yep. wrong. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, uh, a lot of time preachers today, they, they give you just a, a thimble full of scriptures. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, Psalms 35 here, 1 through 9, and then 17 through 20. Uh, most people don't want to read very many scriptures. They want to just talk. Uh, well, that's what my college professors and them said. And... Uh, Said you ought to leave a church in about five years because you'll preach out. <laughs> oh, you've got to be joking. Yeah, for sure, just getting started. Uh, but yeah. anyway, that's that's the mm -hmm. uh, uh, God is my professor. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Psalms thirty-five. Uh, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler. And stand up for my help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff, a weed before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid to catch me catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. And verses 17 through 20. Now, Lord, how long wilt thou look on Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people like I'm doing now. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongly rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye <clears throat> and hate me, th that hate me without cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Now our subject here is Jesus Christ, our advocate with Father God. Uh, based on the verses uh, 17 here. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Lord, how long wilt thou look on because my, rescue my soul from their destruction? Uh, implication here is that an advocate, Christ is our advocate yep. with Father God. I titled the message, Stand Up and Bless the Lord. Yeah. Uh, based on verses uh, 18 here, uh, uh, I will give the thanks in the great congregation. Stand up and bless the Lord. Uh, I, I took the title out of a song book uh, uh, here I uh, I don't know if it's a Baptist song book or not, but anyway, it was a song book I had in my study, uh, uh, and I, I, I think it's based on standing up for Jesus, but this uh -huh. is a little bit differently, but I liked it. That's, a, that's one I couldn't, I couldn't find the other at the time. <laughs> it says, stand up and bless the Lord, ye people of God's choice. Stand up and bless the Lord, your God, with heart and soul. And boys. Amen. Yeah. And so uh, David here uh, is, 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 is sets forth to us in these scriptures. God through David here and in David's life. He shows forth in David's life uh, 
uh, here uh, an example for us of how that we should stand up and bless the Lord in whatever troubles and trials uh, uh, that you're facing. Uh, Brother Rocky, I think that's what you was talking about a little while ago. <laughs> and uh, uh, now uh, in all of these psalms, uh, there's a background. A lot of times preachers don't give the background in which that they are speaking on and they spiritualize a lot. And so it's important that you give the background. Now I'm preaching to preachers and you can preach to me the same thing. <laughs> uh, uh, and so uh, uh, I say all this humbly, okay? Not boastfully or anything like that. Uh, but background is important. Uh, and uh, all of these, most of the psalms, most of them are written by David. There's a few that's not written by David. Some people disagree with that, but, uh, uh, but anyway, they are. And they have a, a, a superscription, most of them do, uh, in the heading above them. You refer to that as, I refer to that as background. Yeah. But not all psalms have a superscription uh, above them. But it's those that are, have that, uh, it is intended to help you understand the language uh, and to, of the psalmist and to understand his interpretation of things or, or help you to interpret things, you see. Just like as Dr. Manus uh, last night stood up and preached uh, and, sh and shared a wonderful message with him, I, I, I understood the background to which he was speaking yeah. from. It was a background of an unregistered church versus a registered church, an incorporated church versus an unincorporated church. And he showed you and told you about the trouble that you can have and will have if you're a registered church and an, uh, 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 and an incorporated church and shared with you some of the troubles and things that he had. And uh, 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 Pastor, you, uh, uh, Johnny, you could not have had a better individual standing up here and telling you about the unregistered churches and the registered churches than Dr. Manus. Amen. Uh, and so thank you, Dr. Manus. Uh, though the many here know about this, you, that was an excellent choice to have him to do that. Thank you. And uh, so now the background of this song here. Uh, the date and, and, uh, uh, and troublesome time that King David of Israel is facing here uh, is not known for sure, it said. Uh, but bless, uh, but uh, uh, it is believed to be in the early part of his life when David, some believe this anyway, uh, but the, uh, it was in the early part of his life he, uh, when he was anointed the new king over Israel, God's chosen people. Uh, 1 Samuel 24, and it was 1000 B.C. The word of God never gets outdated. Saul was presently king and resented the fact that God was removing, deposing, and impeaching uh, him for his uh, idolatry, for his wickedness, and cruelty. The kings of Israel were not to be despotic, but Saul was very despotic, you see. Uh, uh, and, and they had some checks and balance. We have checks and balances and things as well. A lot yeah. of times it's just a paper tiger, uh, you see. But God is no paper tiger. God yeah. sets up one and he takes down another. Yeah. And I believe that God has put Donald Trump in the presidency yeah. of the United States Amen. because uh, yeah. in the paper and in the television, they said there's no way he was getting close to the end. They said there's no way that he can win this election. Uh, uh, it's too late in the election period and the polls got him too far behind. But he won, didn't he? Uh -huh. And so if you don't believe in miracles, you don't yeah. believe in how to get there. It must there be that go. God put him there. I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm just telling you uh, uh, here just what I believe that, that they said. And they proved that it was a, must have been a miracle. And I believe it is a miracle. God is a God of miracles. Yep. Uh, I don't want to get off of there in a little bit. And so uh, anyway, uh, God's impeaching of uh, Saul, King Saul, was no witch hunt. 
to trying to impeach you. Donald Trump was a witch hunt. Yeah. And we know that, you see. Right. At least you got any sense, you'll know that. Now, despotic rulers do not relinquish yeah. their power easily, usually. And this is example seen in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 24 when God impeached uh, uh, Saul from king over Israel. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, 24. And it says there in verses 2 uh, that Saul pursued David here yeah. uh, and, 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 and uh, with uh, 3,000 men. Uh, it's, it's told to us th th there as well. 3,000 armed troops. Uh, and uh, uh, David had 400 men, the psalm tells us as well. In Psalms 22, 2, it tells how many men David. Tw uh, 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 300 men against 4,000 yep. men is not a good contest. No. Uh, but God is all powerful. Yep. And so the Lord, David said, avenged him uh, here and delivered him out of Saul's hand. First 20, Samuel 24 and verses 15. The Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee and see and plead my cause and deliver me out of thy hand. Now actually David was uh, 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 the father, uh, David's father-in-law was Saul. Most people don't know that. And uh, David married Michelle, Saul's daughter, you see. And so uh, it was arranged by King Saul out of favor uh, for David's brave military exploits in killing Goliath, the Philistine giant. Uh, there and uh, so that uh, uh, that it says here in First uh, Samuel in twenty four show you how important context is. It says in verses eleven here or verses. Uh, let me see here where where that is. Uh, uh, he uh, <clears throat> yeah, verses eleven in Psalms in First Samuel twenty four. Here, 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 David is speaking to King Saul uh, when he was in a cave. At, at, both of them was in a cave, and they would happen to be in the cave at the same time. He was in the cave of in Gandhi. And there's some pretty large caves. I, I understand what I read about yeah. in Israel. I've never been over there. I like to go. And some of them are half a mile or a mile on wide. And, things are just, and it's dark in caves. They didn't have any lead lights in that day. And, and so Saul and his army went and camped inside that cave. And David and his men happened to be inside that cave as well. And so David sleeps up, slips up on him like a good soldier do. I used to train me Marines how to sneak up on people, you know, and things of this nature. I'm pretty good at it myself. I know a few times when I'm sneaking up, I used to train them. Uh, uh, we got some great soldiers. Uh, they're just not Marines, Army, Air Force, and all of them. And so uh, they was coming up the hill, and it was going to overtake us and things of this nature. Well, I uh, I went down the hill. I played the scout on them. I went down the hill, and I stood behind. I got behind the bush, and I threw some rocks out here and rocks over there, and I seen the squad coming up, the squad of Marines. And they just kept coming up, and they kept following the sounds that they were hearing, which is natural, right? Well, I was directing them sounds, and I was directing them right into my sights. And then one guy came up, and he was about as here to there. To me, I was shooting blanks. I didn't want to shoot one in his face, put his eyes out. And so when he got up there, he thought he had, I said, and he didn't, I said, boo! And he went flying, all the squad went flying back down the hill. Uh, you see, so David was a, 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 a a brave soldier, you see, yeah. uh, and his men. And so he cut off King Saul's skirt or a piece of his skirt while he was asleep. And his guards should have been able to guard him and keep him from happen yeah. that from happening, you see. And, uh, and so that squad leader was supposed to find me out there. He was not being, and, and so uh, he didn't do his job. And I booed him. The enemy ain't going to boo you. They're going to shoot you. <laughs> 
you see. That's right. And you're going to need an advocate. And God was my advocate, and I stand before you as a man saved and delivered from the troubles and trials that I faced in my life. And the base of most terrible troubles in life is the trials and troubles of sin. Come on, brother. The yep. wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life yeah. through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so in verses here, let me see, I can't see now. My eyes are getting over here. That's my eyeglass block. Here's one over there. Okay, anyway, if you notice here in verses 11, David said to Saul, Moreover, my father, with his skirt in his hand outside the cave, you see. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Moreover, my father, and ye see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. Notice the word father there. It's a little F. Now, why do you think that it is there? Background. Because he was David's father-in-law. Mm -hmm. right. Learn your English. Mm -hmm. Learn the scriptures. You see. And then notice up here in the other verse of scriptures, in verses 16, and Saul said to David, middle part of the verse, of Samuel 20, 1 Samuel 20. Is this thy voice, my son, David? He was not the biological father of David. He was the son-in-law of David. And so uh, background here is important in the language it's used in interpreting uh, the scriptures. Uh, and I have a little bit of background in all of this stuff that I'm sharing with you here. I, think the I was going to preach on John 10, the good shepherd, uh, but the Lord wouldn't let me. And uh, I, I had brought both messages with me. And he said, I want this one, Tom. Stand ye, stand up and bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, so that's what we're doing down here, trying to do. And so here, and so uh, uh, King Saul fell out of favor uh, with the, the king. Uh, and uh, 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 he, David had been honored to serve in the king's court. David was also known as a poet and a musician. Uh, his talent was playing of the harp. He was enlisted by King Saul to play music that consoled him in times of his depression. And uh, uh, Saul here, uh, David, uh, fell out of favor with King Saul when the people, when people sang of David's exploits greater than that of his. First Samuel 21 and 11, David has killed, Saul, David, Saul has killed, killed his t thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. First Samuel chapter 21 and verses 11. And so he began to fall out of, uh, David began to fall out of favor with Saul when that began to happen. And he, uh, uh, when he, he also really fell out when he discovered that the prophet Samuel had anointed David to be new king in, uh, over Israel here and that David was obedience to God. Self-pride, hatred, and bitterness filled King Saul's heart. Heart. Mm -hmm. And he sought to kill David to protect his reign. And so uh, 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 the whole poem, the whole psalm here uh, is an appeal to the Lord of heaven and earth from a bold heart and clear conscience, irritated beyond measure by oppression and evil against David and God's people Israel who sought to follow God's will. Now in verses 26 and 27 of Psalms 35, it tells us here uh, who David's distractors are. They're mentioned in verses uh, 26 here. Uh, we see his distractors. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. And in verses 7 here, this is contrasted with, Saul, with, with David's supporters. He says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor thy righteous cause. Brother Rocky, I thought that's what you were talking about a while ago, right? Uh, yet let them 
Yea, yes, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Now, uh, this psalm begins with a prayer request that God would come to his aid and deliver him by his mercy and grace implied here to be uh, found in his advocate in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is not only the propitiation for our sins, but also for the sins of the world. And so God is no respecter of persons. Now this psalm uh, 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 is often times, uh, uh, they criticize this psalm, they cause it, that, that people want to try to criticize the word of God and God's faithful servants. Uh, you know, none of us are perfect. We won't be sinless until we're with God right. in heaven. But the word of God is perfect. And, and so they say, well, David here prayed an imprecatory prayer. Now, if this psalm is written against the background of Psalms 124 that I read to you there, uh, you know, you can read it there, and you see how much that David loved his father-in-law and loved Israel, loved God and the things of God. Yeah. You want to find fault with him? Yeah, that's not hard to do. It ain't hard to find fault with you and I either. You right. See? And so when you point the finger at others, there's three pointing back to you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, uh, I want you to remind you. Then. So, so he's often referred, criticized for his imprecatory prayers, commentaries tell us. And imprecatory prayer is cursing uh, and uh, here, and, and evil is praying down, cursing and evil upon one's opponents. Many say this is not the kind of prayer a Christian should pray, and the Lord did not talk uh, like this. Uh, but with, uh, <coughs> but with a lot, and and and, and so uh, in noticing in, in Luke in chapter nine uh, and chapter two. Uh, 52 and in verses 56, Luke chapter 2, uh, and for verses 52 and 56, we have uh, the story of James and John, disciples of the Lord. He sent some other disciples away ahead into the city of Samaria to find lodging for him up there. You see, and they were Samaritans of a mixed group of race. They hated Jews, and Jews hated them. Jews said there's no such thing as a good Samaritan. And that woman at Jacob's well, she said, you being a Jew, why you talk to me? Being a Gentile, you see. For Jews don't have anything to do with Gentiles right. and things of this nature. Now, now, and so, uh, and, the, and, and the disciples here said to the Lord, uh, James and John, sons of thunder, they said, Lord, were thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? And so with Elijah, the Lord was in his prayer. But here in Luke, the Lord is not in James and John's prayer. And, you know, we need to make sure that the Lord is in our prayers and we're doing what the Lord yeah. wants us to do. And if the Lord's will for you to call down from higher from heavens, so be it. But seek what the Lord says and don't look to Elijah to make excuses for your life. But look always to God and to God's word, you see. Don't look to what other people are preaching. Look to what you are to preach and preach what thus saith the Lord. It's an in season and out of season, the Bible says. And so that uh, here that uh, uh, the Lord was right to rebuke these to his disciples. Here, notice what he said. Uh, but the Lord turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of, for the right. Son of Man is, come, is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. That was a good idea <laughs> that God told him to do. Don't be trying to do what Elijah did. I was in that prayer of Elijah. I was there with Elijah, and you need to read the story and account of it. Uh, it uh, uh, you can find it in First Kings, uh, Second Kings, I believe it is, and chapter one, verses nine uh, through there. You can read read about it. And so uh, here, uh, in these verses of scriptures, here uh, 
I don't believe that the disciples was planning, praying an imprecatory prayer. They asked the Lord if we should command it. They didn't command it. They wasn't, they wasn't seeking evil against these people. David ain't seeking evil against Saul, his father-in-law. But Saul is seeking evil against David. Mm -hmm. And if anybody ever prayed an imprecatory prayer, it would be Saul, not David necessarily, as we see here in these passages of, of Scripture. And so uh, David was not praying an imprecatory prayer. Neither was uh, uh, his disciples, I believe. I don't believe that you'll find that, 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 that uh, and you might differ with this and this. Not. I don't believe there's any imprecatory prayers in the Psalms. There's a lot of people that list them as imprecatory prayers. And this is listed one of the imprecatory prayers. But you examine it and see for yourself. Is David wanting evil to fall down upon him? Or is he seeking God's divine judgment and God's divine will for his life? Do you think he, he you, you know when he held that piece of skirt up in his hand, if that psalm is written against the psalm, uh, 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 1 Samuel 24, he won't even know, listen, I could have cut your throat. But God forbid that I should touch his anointed. Amen. Right. You see. That don't sound like no imprecatory prayer to me. Right. And things of this nature. And I've never seen one in the Psalms from those I ain't saying that saints can't pray one like that. You can get out of God's will for your life. Yep. But be careful about criticizing the scriptures. Rightly divide the word of God. That's why you need to put a whole lot of scriptures in there. Rightly divide them. Make application to what you've been said yeah. out there. Don't just wave a car and say Old Testament saints are saved on credit. They don't know what you're talking about. Uh, they're not familiar with the word retroactive. They're not for, and that's contained in the word credit, you see. And Calvary is retroactive, reaching back and uh, backward, uh, not just uh, retrospecting. There's a difference between retrospecting and retroactive. I've never heard a minister of God, I've never read a commentary where they use the word retroactive. I, had him see, I have seen them explain it. Dr. B.R. Hahn uh, had done a good job uh, there in doing Romans in chapter 3, verses 25, when he talks about the past sins of Old Testament saints and uses the word credit. And he explains it very well. Uh, but he doesn't mention the word retroactive. It must not be in these preachers' commentary, uh, vocabulary. Uh, Hillary used it when she said, you folks are accusing me of putting top secret material in my server and making it when it really isn't. She's maintaining it. She's lying, see. Yeah. When it really isn't. And you're, and you're making it retroactive, and then you're trying to prosecute me for it. And so other people are making, they don't make God's, especially the Catholic Church, Catholicism. <laughs> and there's more Catholicism in our Baptist churches than you realize in, uh, our, yeah. in our commentaries <laughs> and things of this nature. And so uh, 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 Jesus is, the old, uh, Calvary looks forward, uh, excuse me, Old Testament altar is typical and looks forward to Calvary. Calvary is, 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 is subjective reality and looks backwards to Calvary. And so that we're saved, uh, Old Testament saints and New Testament saints are saved the same way. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us. Now who's the us there? We say that's you and us saying, no, that's not good enough. It's Old Testament saints as well as New Testament saints Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 2, not being mixed with faith, the Old Testament altars, it, uh, it, it did not profit them. Uh, and, and Hebrews chapter 10, verses 4, so you're not redeemed with, uh, it says, it says it, 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 Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. Uh, let me get it there. I get off the top of my head. Uh, you probably got it for, for me. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 4. Uh, where it says, For it is not possible that the blood of goats and bulls should take away sins. What took it away? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that's retroactive, reaching backwards 
you see. And, and, and so it, it, is, it, is, it is proactive, reaching forward and saving all of us that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there's no losing your salvation. There's no being saved for you, just your past sins. Now your present sins need to be confessed in order to be forgiven. And they, mis and they misply 1 John 1, 9 in our Baptist churches and things of this nature because they're filled with the Catholic theology uh, uh, and things of this nature. Uh, uh, but the, uh, uh, it is retroactive. And, and it teaches us in Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 1, uh, verses 11, 10 here, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Verses 14, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Brother, I tell you, like what you said, none of us can boast of our works or merits for the hope that we have. It all belongs to God in Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I'm just telling you, Jesus Christ, our advocate, I didn't get through it, but I'm going to quit. I know you're hungry. <laughs> Jesus, our advocate with Father God, stand up and bless the Lord as David did at all times. Lord, bless thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.